Hi, my name is Kent Lee and I teach computer science at Luther College. In this video I am going to talk about types and uh, their importance and uh, in uh, programming. Um, and there are several different types I want to talk about, uh, integers and floats and strings. Um, and, uh, and I also want to talk about uh, the reference type. So what we have in front of us here is a picture of what a reference looks like in Python. A reference being a pointer that points to a value. So we can see here this R1 width is a variable and it's the name of a, of a value. And R1 width is really what we would call a pointer. This 0x264 here, we can think of that as the address of some value that's in memory. So this is the address of it and this is its value. This address here is called a reference and R1 width here is actually a reference to the name of the reference to the value. We get a picture like this in Python by writing an assignment statement and we have an assignment statement right down here at the bottom of this uh, picture that I have. So R1 width equals 10 is, uh, is an assignment statement and what happens in memory is that we get two things created. We get a reference created and we make that reference point to that value. So whenever we refer to R1 width in our program when we go to use it later on what, we're, what we want to use is this 10 and Python knows to automatically go and find the thing that R1 width refers to and give it to us when we refer to when we refer to R1 width. Um, that leads to some interesting things. Then uh, you may or may not be comfortable with this with these next two assignment statements. They don't look at all like algebra, which many of you are comfortable with. So this x equals one that looks a little like algebra. But letting x be equal to x plus 1, that looks very uncomfortable if you're thinking of it from an algebraic standpoint. We know that x is never equal to x plus 1 um, when we're dealing with, uh, with numbers. Um, that doesn't make any sense if we think of it in an algebraic way, but it does make a lot of sense if we think of it in terms of programming. So what's really happening here in this first one, in this first statement here, we're saying that x equals 1 and we're making a reference point to the value, uh, the value 1 and we're naming that reference x so that we can refer to it later. In the second statement in line 3 down here, we're actually referring to the value that x currently has, which is the 1, and adding one more to it to get 2 and then we're making this x reference point to this new value, this value 2 that we have. So if we look at the next picture here, this gives us an idea of how this works. So x here originally pointed to this 1 and we added an additional 1 to it. So we can think of those two things as being 1 plus 1. And from that we got 2 and then we made x point to that new value. We're making x point to the 2. So this idea of a reference here, this reference can be updated. We can make it point to new things whenever we want to by saying x equals something. Um, now, when it points to this new value 2 here, it no longer points to the old value of 1. So this is orphaned uh, space that's in the RAM of the computer and and this is some extra space as well. We don't need that one anymore after we've added the two together. So these two pieces of information can be reclaimed, they can be reused by Python. And the way I prefer to think of that is thinking of it as some kind of a uh, character, Pac-Man character coming along and gobbling up the, the uh, two pieces of leftover information. Um, this the name of this in Python, the Pac-Man-like character, is actually called the garbage collector. So the garbage collector will come along and reclaim space, and the garbage collector is part of the Python interpreter, part of the, the program that runs our Python programs. So our first type that we're learning about here 
one of our first types that we're learning about is the reference type. References can be updated by saying x equals. Um, when I write x equals 1 here, I make it point to the 1 originally. When I write x equals x plus 1, I take the old value of x, add 1 to it, and make x point to that new value so that I can, uh, so that I have this picture here. Um, so that is important for us to keep in our minds because references will come up over and over again in, in Python and if you can have this picture in your head of the way references work, it will help you understand why some things work the way they do in Python later on. Um, we also have other types that we are certainly learning about here in Python. Um, we have integers and we have floats and we have strings that we have already started to, to learn about a little bit. Um, and I want to make sure that we understand what each of those types is. So if I write x equals 1 um, in the Python shell here, we can see that x truly is 1. And that is an integer. When I write a, a sequence of digits with no um, decimal point in it, that's an integer that I have. Um, I can be guaranteed I know that that's an integer. If I write uh, y equals uh, 6.3 that's a float because there's a decimal point in it. So, um, so that is a, a floating point number in this case and, and if I echo it back I can see it's 6.3. Um, if I take a integer and a float and multiply them together I'm going to get a float as a result of that because I don't want to lose any of the information and in general I won't know that I'm not losing information unless I guarantee that the value is a float. And if I put um, something in quotes, um, for example z equals 6.2, that's a string. So I've got integers, I've got floats, and I've got strings. I said in a previous video here that we cannot take a string and a uh, float and multiply them together and if I try to do that you can see that I get that same error message I saw before. But it turns out that uh, I can take a string and an integer and multiply them together and if I do that what I get is the string um, repeated that many times. So I get 6.2 five times here by multiplying a string times an integer. So I can't multiply a string times a float, but I can multiply it times an integer, and it means to concatenate that many copies of the string. Um, there are, once in a while, we need to be able to convert between different types, and there are lots of operators that we can use to do that. Um, lots of, of different ways that that can be done. Uh, the book, uh, my textbook has uh, some a table in there and some examples of things that can be done, but I'll show you a few here as well. So, for example, if I want to uh, convert this string that has 6.2 in it, my z here, if I want to convert that into a float, um, we have seen that I can put float z and I can get the float out of it. Notice the quotes are gone now. So if I wanted to say that, uh, that a is equal to the float of z, then a now has the value 6.2. Um, likewise, I can take a, uh, an integer and convert it into a string, or a float, convert it into a string, and if I were going to do that, I'd do something like this. I could say, uh, um, b is equal to the str of, uh, of x. Okay, And if I do that, then I can see that b is equal to a 1 in quotes. x was the integer 1, and b is now the string 1. So str converts to a string. Um, float converts to a float. And I can do the same kind of thing with, uh, with int as well. So if I have... Uh, um, h is equal to the string 5. I can say uh, um, i is equal to the int of h, and then I find that i is the integer 5. So I have float, I have str, and I have int that I can use for converting between, um, between values. 
There are other ways of converting between floats and strings and integers as well. So for example, if I would like the, to know what is the ASCII character that goes along with the integer 62, I can find that out pretty easily. I can say, for example, k equals chr of 62. And then I find out that k is the greater than sign in this case. It is possible to go in the other direction as well. So, for example, if you want to find out what the uh, integer value is for an ASCII character, you can say what is the ordinal value of the greater than sign, and that will uh, return to you 62 in this case. So you can go both from the ASCII value to the ordinal to the uh, ASCII character and from the ASCII character to its ordinal value. Um, now, uh, there are ways that you can do this with a string as well, but this is this ORD and CHR work with a single character. So a string, for example, uh, S equals uh, um, hi there, um, has multiple characters in it. And if I want to get to an individual character within a string, I can uh, ask for the first character, which is the zeroth character, um, because in computer science we start counting with zero. So the zeroth character in this string is is a uh, is an H, and the second character, or the the character at position one, is an I. Um, the character at position two, in this case, is a blank. So you don't see anything there, but there's a blank in between those uh, quotes. Um, so if I wanted, I can put these, string these together, if I wanted the ordinal value of the character at position 0 in the string, I can ask and that's 104. So an H's uh, ASCII value is 104. I can also convert between uh, integers and floats uh, using int and float as well. So for example here, um, we have y, which is 6.3, and if I want to know what is the integer portion of that, I can say, well, let's let w be equal to the int of y. So if I do that, um, then I find that I have w is just the integer portion, it's just the 6. This can come in handy if I want to know what is the integer portion of a number. And then, of course, I could use that information to find out what is the fractional port part of a number as well. So, for example, I could say u um, is equal to uh, y minus w, and then I can see that u is equal to 0 0.29999 and so on. Now, you notice something interesting that just happened here, and this is a good time to uh, point this out y is equal to 6.3, um, and so subtracting 6 from 6.3, you'd think we would get 0.3. But the problem is, is that floating point numbers are a, an approximation of a real number. They are not the exact real number that, uh, that is entered in the computer. And the reason for that is because there are infinitely many um, floating point numbers between any infinitely many real numbers between any two real numbers, but there can only be a finite number of floating point numbers between any two real numbers. So the, dif the difference subtracting 6, point, uh, 6 from 6.3, we end up here with a representation of that point 0.3 that is very, very close to it, but not exactly the, that value because that point 0.3 couldn't be represented precisely in the computer. Um, and it had more to do with the subtraction than it did with the, uh, the actual representation of the point 0.3 in the first place. So for example, if I type 0 0.3 here, it shows up as 0 0.3, but the result of that subtraction resulted in a, a value very close to 0 0.3, but not exactly 0 0.3. So, um, so we've seen here references. We've seen here uh, that we can update a reference by uh, s assigning a val another value to it. We have seen integers and strings and floats and how to convert between the 
from from especially from strings to integers and floats and we've also seen that we can convert between integers and floats using int and float as well um, and we've seen ORD and CHR and what they do for us in converting between ASCII integer values and their character representations so um, that's quite a few different ways of converting between types um, and you can consult the text to see other ways that you can convert between types as well